All right, y'all, welcome back to 18 Outdoors. Hey, if you guys at Hunters know, like when you're out going, say, to Walmart or going like to checking station or, or hunting anywhere, restaurants or even some kind of hunting camps, every now and then you'll meet somebody and say, man, I'd really like to talk to that guy just off in the corner. Anyway, I met a guy a couple years ago, and uh, we talked a little bit. Then at the Chattanooga Expo, Mobile Hunters Expo, we, we talked again. He come from where he lives at over there and, and visited and talked. And anyway, we kind of set up a deal where we could talk. But I'm not going to tell his name just yet, but we're going to look at some stuff. This guy, public land stuff, I mean, most of the stuff you're going to look at here, say 90% of it's going to be public land. So it's just, we're going to start in his little, in his garage and just start painting around. White tail, mule deer, <laughs> just... Just gonna give y'all a little sample of what this what this guy does. And some of these is, you know, if you go in a Perry household, some of these would be hanging on the wall as a full map, you know, so but this guy's got some nice Euro mounts. That up there in the top is, I mean, <laughs> most, you know, even this one, most people gonna mount. Them things is 18 inches wide, you know, good times. But he just got he's got it going on. If you ain't seen anything just yet, this is just a sample, like I say. So. He's, got, he's working on that, and he's gonna have it hanging up. It's <laughs> you know, it's that's a clean, cool, good, awesome eight point. So. And there, there's something that's interesting. This is over-the-counter, do-it-yourself, archery hunt. Elk, this season. So, we'll talk about that here in a little bit, too. But we're going to go in here and look at the real stuff. I mean, he's, <laughs> this, like I say, there's some dang good bucks out here. Alabama, most folks let man be chomping at the bit, slobbering at the mouth but, to get a hold of a deer like this. But when we we'll go in here in his real room, you'll see. So, we'll be in here in a minute. All right, y'all, we can get serious now. Are y'all ready? Because I'm talking about it's going to get real serious. We're going to start right here. Look at that beast. All these deer, and he's got some elk, and he's got some mule deer. All public land. Well, the 90% of them is public land, especially all the big ones. A variety of weapons from uh, regular bow to crossbow to shotgun, and some straight wall case weapons. So. But uh, again, he start, he hunts public land from the south all the way to the west. I mean, just very impressive. What's the story on this buck on the right, right here? That one right there was a state land. State deer. land deer. Just look at it. Western Kentucky got from there. Western Kentucky. Look at the long times on that deer. I mean, just. And you go on down that wall, it don't stop. Big ones. You know, I'm talking about nice ones, very nice. 10, 11 inch tines. Look at this crazy thing with that big bladed. Amazing. Keep my camera straight, and I'm sorry if I'm not doing real good, but anyway. Just a wall full. Look at the big old body on that thing. And he's a fisherman too now. <laughs> Saltwater stripe, smiley. Steelhead, a couple of large mouths, a walleye, and a bluegill. This guy seriously is an all-around, really all-around sportsman. And we're gonna look at these cool dudes right here. Look at that wide. That deer's 20 inches inside, probably. Just, I mean, just a, a very cool buck. 
Puddle and mule deer, both. Over the counter stuff now, I'm talking over the counter, on your own, very nice elk with a bow. Look at this whopper mule deer with a bow. I'm talking about, that's, a, that's about as good as it gets with a bow for anybody. Oh, there's another white tail, another big one. So, he also got a nice black bear. And he's killed black bears on public land too, right? Yeah. He just don't have a mount or anything. Yeah. So I'm saying that this guy, he hunts. How many days a year do you hunt? I've tried hard to figure that sometimes, but uh, somewhere between the neighborhood of probably 90 and 120 days, <laughs> either hunting or, that's not counting scouting days, so. 90 to 100 days of hunting. And we're gonna get in how he does this, and man, we're gonna get kind of get set up and set and talk with him because He's one of uh, America's finest, you know, America's greatest. We'll get into that in a minute. I mean, we're all proud of him. We'll get into that. But I mean, it's awesome. To, you know, 90 days, I mean, that's serious. You know, that's, you know, we got, you know, everybody knows Jamie McKay. We talked about him, interviewed him. He puts in a lot of days. This guy right here, I have Jamie beat on time in the woods, but he's got special ways that he can do that. So we're going we're gonna to get into that. But again, it's just an awesome, awesome high ceiling house with, He's got plenty of room for some more, and he's working on trying to get another right now. So. He likes sitting there eating breakfast every morning. Just look at this. <laughs> it's awesome. I like that name, Black. That's great. All right, y'all. We're set up again. You know, I met this guy. If y'all paid attention to the bear hanging on the wall, well, I went to Alaska three years ago, and when we got picked up, there's a couple guys with a guide, and uh, come to find out, the guide was involved in a uh, purple heart hunts, you know, wounded veteran hunts, and then I mean a very amazing thing. We're, I'm real proud that people are doing that, and uh, I met Mr. Alvin Hatton here and uh, talked to him a little bit. And he had a friend with him, and they, they both hunted. Well, Alvin got a nice black bear and saved them off. They went fishing, and like I say, last year, or this past year at Chattanooga, he come up with, he messaged me some, or we messaged back and forth a little bit talking hunting, because he talked to me about how he hunted and stuff. So anyway, we met up again in Chattanooga and asked him about coming out. But Alvin is a, or Mr. Hatton, or Master Sergeant Hatton. It's a, Just Alvin, or Alvin, Al, Al. Al, Al so, Anyway, retired, special forces, special ops, you know, has seen and done things to protect our country and our world that, you know, most people can't imagine, you know. If, if, you, if you know anything about some of the stuff in the Middle, West, Middle East, you know, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, so you've been involved in some of that stuff that just, and Syria is one that kind of threw me up for a look because you don't hear much about our armed forces being in Syria, and you told me that very few have, and you, you're one of them because that's just a, a hotbed of bad stuff. And so, we're proud. I'm proud that you know to have people like you that have done that and taken care of us. You know, it's bad about some of the situations that happened after that. You know that you know it just is what it is. But you know, but I'm I'm, I'm proud and glad, and, and all the people that are watching this. You know, if y'all watch this, give him a thumbs up or or or. USA, you know, we're proud to be Americans, all that, and, you know, we're trying to do what we can do to, to you know, protect and, and everything for this country, and, and, and part of it is our hunting. And, uh, and his career hunting has been involved with his career in the military. He's been in different states, stuff like that. So you've, now you're retired and you're, you're enjoying it more, but so you've each, Kind of, if you don't care, go through like at some of your stations because you grew up say, in Tennessee. So if you want to uh, yeah, I, I claim Tennessee because uh, <laughs> that's where I, I basically I went to high school and um, at, you don't I don't bleed my, orange, do you? No, I'm not so much a. I don't have enough time for football with, <laughs> okay. with fishing and hunting and everything else I like to do. Yeah. I ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't have enough time to to get into football, okay. but uh, yeah, where do I start? I mean. You know, I, I, I always say I was blessed to be able to do what I was able to do. Um, and the Army allowed me to, to jump all over this country and see a lot of really cool places and uh, get to hunt a lot of really cool places I probably wouldn't have been able to do 
had I not been in the military. Right. Well, I, I can say the same thing. So another part of your military stuff was is the halo, the high altitude stuff. Yeah, I uh, for uh, the majority of the time um, that I was in, I I was on a halo team and also did a, a position out in Arizona as an instructor. So some of the places uh, that I that I was stationed, uh, my first duty station uh, was Kansas, which is probably my biggest regret because I did not take advantage of the big white tails out there, the white tails <laughs> that Kansas offered and elk, uh, really? Fort Riley, the, uh, army base there has got a really good, um, I don't know what it is now. And I know it's not just over the counter, but, uh, they've got a pretty good elk program out there from what I understand. Wow. I didn't even know they had elk in Kansas. Now they do have some really good fishing. Um, there's uh, right outside the base there, the Republican River, I believe, uh, just loaded up with uh, white wipers, the striped bass, white bass hybrid. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's where that actually that wall I came from was out of that river. Wow. And then from there, I, I got to go out west. My first taste out west was Washington. Um, and then all the way from there, all the way back over to the, to the east coast of North Carolina. And then... Uh, the majority of my time was spent uh, at Fort Campbell, Fort Campbell. Uh, yeah. which was my my favorite place out of all of them to be. Yeah. That's kind of a big deer place, maybe. Yeah, Western Kentucky is uh, in general. So, you know, I was just actually looking at the uh, uh, Boone and Crockett statistics today, and I think they have Kentucky now ranked number four. Uh, for entries. I mean, did you, did you remember how many total entries? I don't know offhand, but uh, yeah. Well, so I, know Alabama, I know Alabama was about 30, you got 31 entries in Boone and Crockett last time I looked. You know, that's, you know, most, a lot of states, it's, you know, big buck states put more than that in a year. So, yeah. so if, if Kentucky's number four, that's, I mean, that's very I important. believe, I, I could be wrong, so, you know. I know they've come on strong over the last, you know, several years though. So that's, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. So during that time, your hunting time, you also, again, like we were talking about Afghanistan, Iraq, and, and Syria, and I kind of forgot to mention that you survived some instances, you know. Yeah, like, there's a couple close calls. <laughs> so, <laughs> like three? Yeah, I really, you know, two of them weren't really uh, much to talk about. Just, uh, but still, it was an explosion. They yeah. tried. They tried to you know, look yeah. at the damage to the vehicles. Yeah. So, yeah. And one was pretty bad. And, you know, that's the Purple Heart one. So, it, but you know, that's that's amazing. You know, but one, but having three incidents. You know, I don't know what's the running, you know, cold or whatever is going on out there. How many of your like, groups, your teams, yeah. how often they had something like that happen? Well, but it was just yeah. Well, I wasn't These, necessarily you know, like one and track. one band, but three is like golly bone, you know. Yeah, so. I wasn't keeping track, but uh, I mean, I everybody over there, I'm sure I've seen a fair share of, right. of pretty crappy experiences, but yeah. uh, I can I can only imagine, you know, it just you know. I tried to get on a uh, uh, a hunt over there, the, an ibex hunt. <laughs> well, that would have been something. Yeah, that's it would have been something, and and I had it all lined up, but uh, come to find out that. Yeah, where they wanted to take me was actually in Iran, and I don't know if that would have uh, <laughs> worked. Would have worked. I, I had everything lined up and ready to go, and uh, team captain he didn't want to. Wow. He wasn't going to sign off on that wow. though. That's not, well, that would have been cool. Well, that'd been a story. That would be. That would have been something to be over there and get run back a high back. So, so to me, one of the biggest things I take from talking about it is his specialty is. is Everybody talked about the running gun hunting, the mobile hunting, and <laughs> talking to him, this is Mr. Mobile. You know, your elk hunts, the elk hunts, he's telling me like he'll pack tent stuff in five, six miles and set up, you know, spot camps and stay with them. He even, the last elk, he's telling me he slept with a tent in an elk bed, yeah. you know, and was hunting, waiting for the elk to come back to the area and end up killing one of the bow. And I mean, that's, that's, you know, as mobile as you can get to be. So yeah. move around. So you like, you know, running, gunning, stand on the move, stand on a hot sign. You even 
from elk to mule deer and whitetail kind of go through what your strategy is on yeah. on how you do that yeah for whitetail um pretty popular now a lot of guys are hunting out of saddles um no you know that's uh that's pretty much i i don't know what the percentage now is but oh, that's, that's, it's that's a, a lot a lot of guys thing. hunting out of yeah. saddle now i like the ability to um because I hunted a, a climber for a long time. Um, and I really liked my lone wolf climber. I just, once I got in a saddle, the ability to get in any tree, um, for the most part, I really like that. And uh, and I've got a system that's, you know, you've seen it, it's pretty compact, light. It's a mixture yeah. of a bunch of different companies that uh, I pick, picked each one that I like the best. And uh, yeah, I, very seldom will I ever hunt the same tree twice. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's incredible. And uh, I, I, sometimes if I find, if I know there's a good deer in the area, I'll concentrate on that area and, and basically bounce around and try to get in closer and closer. Um, maybe do an observation sit one day and then um, see what that tells me and try to get a little closer and closer. Uh, this year I was after, a, well, I want to say still am after a pretty good buck. I haven't tagged out in Kentucky yet. And uh, I just, you know, probably, I did six hunts on him and uh, just moving in a little closer and closer each time. And then um, unfortunately I wasn't able to seal the deal. I made a shot on him and um, it connected, but it wasn't enough to, uh, Still believe that deer is running around. I don't think it was enough to bother. Bother. It it might it it's put him in a little bit of a different pattern, and I've kind of left him alone. Yeah. But yeah, I remember. Uh, I think you texted me and, and messaged me about asking a few questions, and yeah, we pretty much kind of from the get go kind of figured he wouldn't hurt real yeah. bad from way, from the way he reacted and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. I think I might have had a little bit of an arrow deflection, and um, yeah. Good, Nick. No blood, no no really sign of uh, him running off wounded, just a little bit on the arrow, so. So early season, you like, so you run cameras and stuff and you kind of get an idea where bucks are kind of hanging I, out at. Yeah, yeah, I run quite a few cameras. Um, and then a lot of it is historical, just areas I've hunted before. Um, early season, I really focus on white oaks up until they start laying rubs. Um, and then once they start rubbing trees, then I'll, I'll start, I'll continue to focus on white oaks, but I'll kind of push towards where the better sign is, buck sign is in those areas. Uh, so, uh, well, so now you're transitioning on to like pre-rut and rut, you got yeah. any kind of special things? That you... Yeah, so as we get closer towards the end of, uh, October, I'll start shifting from hunting a food source, which predominantly in, in big woods for me is going to be like a, a, a white oak, which this year was a huge, was a, I guess, mass crop of oaks. They're everywhere. So it, it's been pretty difficult this year because you couldn't walk five feet without finding oak. Yeah. I like to focus uh, on other years when there are not as many acorns. Typically, I can find one or two trees that are that tend to be dropping more than other ones and kind of focus on them. But as it goes towards the end of October, I'll start looking to, uh, you know, travel corridors where I know does are flowing through and, and bucks aren't far behind, so. Uh, I'm doing it like in between food sources, maybe maybe in between crop fields? Or yeah, well, actually, well, I, a lot of it's fairly close to, I look for the bedding area and I look for a food source and then I try to get probably at the beginning of the year, I'm closer to the food source as it starts to um, heat up towards the end of October, I'll start moving more towards the bedding areas. Um, do you ever do any kind of calling or anything or just? Yeah, um, this year I actually had a little success rattling. I rattled in a couple smaller deer. Um, uh, as far as grunts, I, you know, each deer kind of responds differently. I just kind of, if I see a buck, um, I may give him some grunts. I usually don't blind call. Uh, just 
for whatever reason, I, I, I don't want to blind call and then be got caught off guard. Yeah, that's which, not- Sometimes I'm like that, you know, at times I might blind call a little bit, you know, just because just the feeling or whatever, but yeah. I'm always terrified of getting snuck up on behind yeah. a damn wind or something like that, so. Yeah. And then, you know, de- just depending on how the deer reacts, sometimes they don't want anything to do with it. Sometimes, yeah. um, I have had, I had a good friend, you know, I, I had him hunting with me in, in a different location. He, he picked up the call and... He said before he could get the call down, that deer had run a hundred yards down the hill to him, wow. and it was almost standing underneath him. So <laughs> that's, 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 that's cool. Now, I've had a couple times where they come trotting in and stuff. You know, not monster bucks, but you know, two year olds, maybe three year olds. But sometimes, like I say, just it's just how they're feeling that day, and you don't want to. I never want to try to push them too much because, I mean, you know, you get them on the edge like they know something's up, then it might be tougher then as the season progresses. So. So now after that, you know, you know, usually, so you jump around a little bit, but usually you don't, you're pretty successful in late season hunting. You don't really do that much, do you? But yeah, so, well, and then once rut is in full swing, now I'll really focus on those um, travel corridors where they're crossing, you know, just high traffic areas where, where bucks are running. And then late season, which is one of my favorite times to hunt, and uh, then it's back on food source, hard. Um, it's a little harder late season because the white oaks have usually um, started to seed out by then. Uh, and if, so if I'm, I'm hunting oaks, I'll, I'll tend to stick to red oaks more. Um, but there are some areas that have some uh, pretty good food sources, whether it be honeysuckle, natural browse, uh, those thickets can, can uh, create a lot of natural browse that can be food sources and then you know if you have the opportunity some of the public lands I hunt have some actual um, either crops that weren't harvested or um, actual planted food plots clover or radishes and stuff like that wow so. a honeysuckle thing you know we used to have them quite a bit where, where I hunt at some but it's not as like it used to be so I don't know what's happened but that's one. That's a good, you know, natural food source for deer. So, yeah. so. Uh, a couple of the areas I hunt, public land up here, they uh, they had some ice storms that knocked over a lot of trees that created some thickets and and that honeysuckle. There's some specific spots that um, it kind of took over in there. Wow. And I also have uh, towards a little further east of the state. Uh, I don't know if you, you guys have kudzu. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah. yeah we got cuts <laughs> which isn't great late season because it's all dried up but that's a food source early season that i've had pretty good success in too yeah they like it they a lot of times like because the patches we got are so big they get in the middle of it and stay in there and it's kind of yeah. hard to get to them but yeah, yeah. they like it but the well, they, they use it as a food source and cover and cover so yeah but, but when it freezes it's pretty good they, that stuff dies off pretty quick yeah, but yeah you're right yeah. that's that's a good food source and they say it's pretty good protein for them but it's yeah. kind of an invasive you know, plant, you know. Yes. So, but. I guess that's something I don't, you don't hear a whole lot, you know, I don't hear a whole lot of guys talk about kudzu. I don't know because a lot of the northern states don't have that. Right. Um, yeah. But. I know there's a patch pretty close to my house and, and a lot of times in the spring when it's getting back real green, yeah. I've seen some deer in there and there's a big pile in there. So yeah. It's pretty neat kudzu. You know, if, you know, most people don't think about kudzu. You know, yeah. you know, you don't think about that. And the honeysuckle thing, you know, late season, even, you know, if acres not, you know, are not doing good and then you know cut over stuff with honeysuckle patches that's that's a, that's a real good food source that's pretty neat that you know Kentucky is that diverse I didn't really think of it like that you know yeah. so yeah. and then uh, you know the surrounding area if uh, some of the state land I'm hunting has got uh, some crop fields around it on the border and I you know kind of look at that a lot of a lot of looking at uh, onyx and Trying to figure out where they're at and where they're going to be and they how go. to how to get in there and get them. So that's that's, that's incredible. So, and I know it's like you use a, a latitude split. Yep, I like, that. I, I like I've tried several of the saddles. The latitude with the two panel design for me was most comfortable, and I, I'm running that latitude saddle. It's been great. Um, 
platform. I've got a couple of different platforms. I, I don't think I've found exactly the one I like yet. Um, but, uh, and then the Lone Wolf Custom Sticks. And I know a lot of guys, um, as far as packing their, their stuff in, they're, they're, I have not found a backpack that I liked well enough for saddle hunting. Um, so I, I kind of, I guess, created my own. I, I got a uh, Alice pack and had them uh, fabricate me a flat panel with Molly attachments that I'm able to kind of configure however I want and I can change it up, um, which for me works great. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing about the mobile hunting thing is trying to get everything light and small where you can yeah. go for miles. So figuring a pack that can carry like me, I'm the, it's hard for me to get everything I want in a pack because I'm just so used to carrying a bunch of stuff back when I carried climbers, a whole whole bunch. So trying to get that down size, do some stuff is, you know, which I don't use a saddle, but you know, I've got a lock on to, that I do some. So it's just that part, the, it's trying to figure that part out. It's, yeah. it's been I, tough I think uh, there's several companies out there that, that see the, the lack of packs and, and they've all started creating a couple of different packs specifically for saddle hunting. I just haven't found the one I want yet, or the one I like yet. Right. Well, tell me one of the most exciting and dear stories you've got, a success story with a bow, just, you know. Oh, man. Uh, you know, I don't think it would probably be one of these out here, one of the bigger ones. Um, it, it don't probably, have to be big. It'd probably be uh, specifically with a bow or? Well, it don't matter. It doesn't um, Hmm, that, well, the elk, my first elk was a oh, I can imagine one. that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and hear an elk story. Yeah. Be, yeah. Uh, I know a lot of guys like, you know, are chasing whitetail, but uh, I've always dreamed of going out west, and that was always kind of on the bucket list. Uh, I was actually, I was stationed in Arizona for a little while, and they had elk out there, which uh, I put in every year for, for the draw, and, uh, I was, I had high hopes and I didn't quite understand the Western draw system yet. So I was putting in for areas that needed multiple preference points and I had zero. And, uh, you know, and I was only there a short time. Uh, so I did a couple over the counter, like low opportunity areas with a rifle and didn't see anything. But, uh, so I came back and, and that, that spark was still lit and, uh, I, I, uh, I had a buddy that had gone on an elk hunt the year prior, so he made it seem like, well, it is doable. So I uh, had a couple cousins and we all kind of talked each other into it. Well, I got one cousin out west that he's been trying to get us to come out for a while now. Um, and I'll be honest, kind of got lucky. We just randomly picked a, a spot on the map, a unit, so, okay, this is where we're going. I, I did have a buddy that kind of pointed me in that direction. He had hunted that unit before, so um, he did give us a couple starting points. Went out there, and uh, unfortunately, my elk hunt didn't last long. I think it was the second day of the hunt. I had uh, found a way to get to the top, and the majority of the hunters were at the bottom going up, and we were able to get up on top of the mountain and set up a spike camp. And uh, actually, funny story, that first night, I actually got a little too close to elk, and the entire night, I could hear bugling and chuckling and <laughs> cow calling, walking right by the tent, probably 50 yards. Wow. So it, awesome. it was too close. So we packed up and moved it a little bit further up, and then uh, that next morning, I had bugling. Had, matter of fact, I thought that it was actually... Um, I'd never been exposed to bugling before, and I thought there was another hunter in the area. <laughs> so I thought somebody was, you know, bugling back at me. I'd kind of put my bow down and was just walking up the hill to see if I could meet up with him when I ran into some cows, and I thought, well, maybe that isn't a, that is a bull elk. <laughs> and sure enough, it was a big one, uh, which I never got on him. The next day, we came back in, had some bugling that morning, but I had found a water hole the day prior and it was probably nine, ten o'clock. 
Um, I'd been hunting a couple hours. It was kind of slowing down. There wasn't any bugling. And I parked myself next to that water hole, kind of waiting. And uh, luckily I had knocked an arrow and, and had everything ready. And I'd probably been sitting there for about an hour. Every so often I'd, I'd, I'd make a, a bugle. And I actually had heard one bugle a, a pretty good ways off. But I continued to sit on that water hole. And uh, I just happened to hear, hear a branch break. And I, I looked over the over the hill and I seen horns. I picked my bow up and before I knew it, it was over. <laughs> I shot my first elk and uh, he ran down out of sight and he didn't go far, probably about 40 yards. That's and, awesome. Uh, <laughs> then that's when the work begins. Uh, the work or fun? Well, Which has, it's all fun. Yeah, yeah. My, I, my cousin Jimmy helped me pack that out and he says packing them out is, is funner than hunting them. Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far, but uh, oh, but man. it is. It, I think it's it's funner packing them out because that's something you can do together. It's kind of uh, tough to you can hunt them together, but plus it's uh, success. You know, yeah, that, that yeah. Makes yeah. It better, so. And the very next day, we we packed mine out. I took it to a, a processor because uh, we were gonna, you know, I was two days into a ten day hunt, and. Uh, I took mine to the processor. I dropped him back off, and before I could get up there the next morning, he had shot one. Wow! Yeah, kind of same deal. He uh, <laughs> he was sitting on the side of the hill in in the general area. I shot mine, and you know, a, a nice. I think his was a five by five as well. Wow. Walked right to him, and uh, that's awesome. So Thanks. it was it was pretty good meeting up with him in the morning. Uh, and, and seeing success success and, and, and another pack job ahead and, of us right and this place you're doing this is just straight over the counter you can do that every year yeah I mean, well that unit it, specifically was um over the counter the next year it actually went to a draw unit oh, yeah. which i actually enjoyed because it it got it it made me push push it a little bit more so the following year i uh i bounced around and hunted I think three unit, three different units that year. Um, you were asking about technique or strategy, and my strategy was I did as much map reconning as I could, but I didn't limit it to just one area. So I'd look at multiple areas. And if I got to a unit and I didn't see extremely fresh sign, see elk or hear elk, I'd spend, I'd pack in one day if I didn't see the sign I liked, I'd pack out and move to a, a completely different unit. Wow, <laughs> that's a, that's a lot of work right there. Yeah, it can be. Cause yeah. you showed me a, a track where you done twenty something miles in two days. Uh, I think it was nineteen miles, um, <laughs> in in two days. And gaining a lot of elevation. Which the mileage isn't isn't uh, you know it may not nineteen miles in two days isn't over the top but the the elevation well in the mountains is you know yeah, <laughs> yeah the elevation and all that yeah. yeah the elevation is you know um starting out and climbing two thousand feet of elevation um can be pretty rough yeah that's impressive so and it's I, real impressive that the high 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 pressure area over the counter stuff you know and, and with a boat you know yeah. being, being success successful multiple times you know not just one you know yeah. so and that's it so and you're like you say you do a bunch of recon and scouting on the maps with the elk stuff and you the white tail from what i've talked to you about you you're from postseason to early to spring to from shed hunting to looking for them while they're in velvet and all that you're you're spending as much time as you can learning your area and learning how the deer yeah. do everything and this is not just one one county or one man in there or whatever it's multiple places yeah right? so. yeah i uh luckily in you know where i'm located um i have the ability to to hunt not just several state land areas in the in the state of kentucky but tennessee illinois um and as well as some of the military installations which um that's a whole know, different are open option. to the public as well right all public land so you know you got 
got to go through some hoops, you know, to do that. But yeah, that's you know, so some people know me. The first turkey I ever killed was, was on an army base. You know, we had to do some stuff, but you know, kind of kind of aggravating, but worth it because yeah. there's some unique opportunities on some of this military stuff. So and they're they're also bonus deer, so extra deer. Yeah, they uh, don't count toward my statewide bag wow. limits. That's pretty neat. Yeah, real neat. So, uh, you prefer what type, say the terrain, you prefer more hilly terrain or the flatter stuff or? Well, for walking, I like the flat stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I like the terrain that the deer are in. Right. So, so it um, don't matter, so it don't matter. You're looking for yeah. deer, deer, so. If, I mean, it, in, in this area and a lot of the places I hunt, it is some pretty hilly, um, all the way up to steep terrain. Um, and I've been able to find deer all throughout, you know, some of the, even the steep areas, there's some flat, um, you know, creek bottoms mm -hmm. that I really enjoy hunting. A lot of times it's a little thicker down there on the creek bottoms. I typically, I typically don't hunt the sides of the hills, but you know, I've got some, some areas that are good open flat uh, oaks or uh, clear cut areas that, or areas that have been logged in the past and have kind of come up a little bit thicker. And then, so I would say I, I usually concentrate up up high or down low. Don't spend a whole lot of time in the middle. Middle, okay. Wow, so what well, do you prefer as far as time frame hunting? Mornings, evenings, or all day, or well, any time you can be in the woods, or what? Yeah, I, uh, like, again, I was blessed to serve in the army uh, for 23 years, so I have a little extra time now that I'm out, and, uh, and I spend the majority of that time is, uh, you know, early season it's so hot, I I don't spend as much time. Typically, I hunt mornings. I'll scout a, a lot during the day and then hunt that evening. Um, a lot of times, I'll scout new areas and then hunt them that evening, um, and then as of November. Uh, towards the end of October when those deer really start moving and chasing. Um, yeah, all day hunts um, on multiple occasions. Um, and then uh, late season, same thing. I, I'll hunt a little bit longer than I typically would during the beginning of the year. Um, Cause I've seen those deer get up and, and feed right during the middle of the day as well. Yeah, that's when it gets cold. What's... But yeah, if you, anytime you can get out, it's great. Um, Actually, I would say during, you know, when we're talking late October, a lot of times I don't get in the woods as early as I do early season. Early season, I like to be in the woods super early. Um, sometimes I'll slip in right at daylight um, uh, as it gets later in the year. Yeah, so if it's cold, cold. Yeah. That's why I do If it's cold, cold, you know, so. Yeah. You know, especially with Kathy, she don't like it. If I have to drop her up, like carrying her, you know, I'm dropping her off first, and then it might be an hour before daylight. And if it's cold, cold, she can't handle that. Yeah. So, easing in at daylight, which most of the time, you know, that that works out good. So, a lot of times, you know, like Alabama, I don't know how it is here. When it's real cold, most times deer don't wait, move around much until the sun gets up, you know, a little bit. So, but, but it kind of just depends. But I don't like getting too cold. I don't like getting too wet. No. So. No, uh, good layering systems, um, and then that's, keeping that's, those that's feet another, warm. That's another thing to think about. Y'all you know, were talking about because you've been in the military. Y'all, y'all probably had different types of, or went through different kinds of clothing and stuff to yeah to figure some of that out. Y'all you know, that were most of you normal people probably wouldn't get to see that much. You get to experiment yeah. with some stuff, I'm sure. And, yeah, oh, we got uh, definitely. I've I've been able to. Um, even some of the battery powered stuff, uh, as far as a vest. Really? Um, I used to run a vest for a long time, a battery powered vest. But uh, yeah, some of our halo jumps, you're jumping out in altitudes where it might be, you know, 10 degrees, but then by the time you land, you're looking at 90 degrees. So wow. staying warm up, you know, being able to stay warm and then cool off, you know, and then once you land, be able to cool off. So a lot of layers. Um, for me, typically my feet are the first things to go and, uh, I've solved that, you know, with, uh, some sort of, 
yeah, I was going to talk about this because he turned me on to it. I kind of had heard about it before, but had kind of forgot about it. But yeah, I, me personally, I wear a, uh, a, a lightweight wool sock um, with uh, a pair of crispy boots, uninsulated but waterproof. And then uh, Gore Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex. I try to. I don't want my feet sweating. What kind of socks? I mean, name name brand or something. That's... I any. I don't like the real thick wool socks, but just uh, just wool. Yeah, a, 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 a mid, almost like a hiker, um, huh. a hiker wool sock. Um, try to keep my feet from sweating, and then once you get up in the stand, that's when the uh, there's a couple different companies the arctic shields a big i think it's an arctic shield. arctic shield they make a good one it's a boot cover hot hands go in in there right over the toes and that'll that'll typically yeah uh, do the trick that's a game changer trust me I'm, we're going to talk about that in a different a different little video or something one day because uh yeah yeah i couldn't believe it well, but we'll talk about that that's amazing i mean i'm I'm glad he, he kind of reminded me of that. Yeah. You know. And then, you know, walking in, I try to dress light, carry any heavy outer jackets. Um, I have a couple, like uh, the shirt I'm wearing, you know, lightweight. Lightweight wool. Lightweight wool. It, you got anything underneath that? Uh, I got another, it's a smaller waffle style. Um, a waffle style, I, I got some pants like that, and that's something that's, that's very interesting. It, it creates an air pocket yeah. underneath. You know, if you haven't ever heard of that, it's got grooves on the bottom side of the material that goes against your skin, holds air, it'd be similar to like a sleeping bag yeah. or something, or a puffy jacket. And that, keeping that warm air on you is, 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 is something else. And I know. think it also helps uh, if you're sweating a lot, it'll help dry out, it gives a little air flow in there to so. keep you from getting yeah. soaking your clothes. But then once I get to the stand, I wear a, a, a lightweight down jacket and then a, a wind, you know, something to block the wind over that if it's and that that, that typically wool, the wind blocker or? uh the the wind the jacket i wear it's not wool but uh it's like a fleece style real quiet um because that's a, the bad thing about the down jackets usually they're going to make a little yeah, bit of noise but they're, they're, them things are nice underneath of, of yeah this, so. yeah so i i kind of layer layer that down jacket in between the um the lightweight wool and then put the a soft fleece type windbreaker jacket over that. Yeah, that's something that's changed a lot, you know, here over the years, the clothing is, is, is very important and the layering system like you talk about. Yeah, you know, it almost turned into equipment, you know, <laughs> yeah. more more so than clothing. Yeah, that's, that's a good word for it, equipment, equipment that works, you know. So, yeah. So, and that is awesome. So uh, again, man, we appreciate on you know, people like him that had served and stuff and 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 the what he's showed me and talked you know discussion with some of this stuff is just it's crazy you know mule deer with the bow spot and stalk you know very nice and so and just, that's another one that's that's very doable you know yeah so, I, you know i've done you know i've done a few you know not like i haven't killed anything as big as these you know i've done been successful doing some oh, do it yourself over the counter and some draw stuff, you know, like in Wyoming, and there's states you can do that, and and uh, it's getting real popular now with the whitetail. But that's some other stuff to think about, you know, it's the elk and the mule deer, and you know, various other things you can do over the counter yourself. You know, some of it you might have to go through the draw process, but it, it's all doable. And and to me, that stuff helps your whitetail hunting, doing other things, you know, because your elk hunting and mule deer hunting, you have to do a lot of you know observation stuff, and you know, kind of try to see something visible before you make a plan to, yeah. to, to hunt there or have a real good sign. So it's just another tool in your box to help you for a white tail is doing other animals I always think so. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully while you're up here we we have we put some miles on <laughs> and we've seen some good sign but yeah. um seen a few deer. So. Yeah. Uh hopefully we can we still got enough time to hopefully get you on a deer up yeah. here. No pressure. We're having yeah, fun. No pressure. We got a day left. <laughs> we got one day left, but, it, but it's been it's been awesome. We we also having a great time, and, and appreciate him inviting me up to do this. And uh, you know, we've been talking about it for a couple of years, kind of. And so it's a uh, and it's kind of shocking or, or or to see. You know, I knew he'd kill some good ones, but I walked in here and seen these deer. I was like, golly bum, because it's I mean they 
great. I'm talking about awesome bucks for anywhere still. And uh, and he's got some that, you know, that he's after that's, you know, big. But, but anyway, I appreciate you inviting me out and enjoy this. Good time. And, you know, we're having a great time. And again, this is awesome. And we appreciate Mr. Alvin for inviting us in here and seeing this and, and appreciate his service. And uh, appreciate y'all watching. Like, subscribe, you know, give old Al a thumbs up there and you know, appreciate him and we'll see y'all later. Thank y'all for watching this video. Hey, we appreciate y'all y'all support. Hey, you don't care if you haven't got a book yet, Amazon, get a book. We got hard copies now available. It took me a while to get them. But hey, they're on there now. Again, we appreciate it. Appreciate everybody's hard work that helped us to get this done, you know, you know, lifetime achievement. So hey, anyway, you can get one and uh Thanks again for your support. Subscribe, like, tell your friends, and uh, we'll keep coming up with these videos. So we'll see y'all on the next one.